Tiffany. Welcome back. It is good to see and more importantly hear you. I mean, it was fine talking to myself because people already think I'm kind of crazy, but it really just helped confirm a lot of things for people. And yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. First, I'm glad you decided to go the ice cream route instead of the popsicle route because I think we're all a little too familiar with what you like to do with those in your spare time. And then secondly, I really enjoy the interview with Adam from Chip Theory Games last week about death gaming. I learned a lot about playing games, um, so I thank you both for that. I don't know how they do trick-or-treating in California. Back home in Florida, they would just go trick-or-treating on Halloween. That's when you went to get candy. Here in New England, at least in New Hampshire, they schedule it. It just, it blows my mind. It's like dogs and cats living together. And while we haven't had earthquakes and volcanoes, we have had snow on the ground for the last two years, which makes getting candy a little tricky. Oh god, I'm so stupid. It goes without saying that the last two Halloweens weren't so great, especially because I have little kids. This year, luckily, fortunately, it is supposed to be beautiful, which is great because this is my favorite holiday. Well, second favorite, but anyway, we won't get into that. But it got me to thinking about what do people do when they can't go outside, or if they have little kids and you go trick-or-treating when it's four o'clock in the afternoon because that's when little kids are supposed to go before all the crazy teenagers who are too old to be doing it are out, go, you're back by five or six, what are you gonna do with the rest of your night? Well, play games, of course. And while we're at it because it's so early and because Halloween is on a Friday night this year, why not just throw a movie into there as well? Um, which is like my other love, movies, games, it's just perfect. So that's what I'm gonna talk about this week family friendly gamed movie themed nights of goodness. <laughs> now I know you love Ghost Splits by Jack Zemet. For those of you who don't know it is a two to eight player real time dexterity grabby madness game. There are five items on the table, a white ghost, a blue book, a red chair, a green bottle, and a gray mouse. Cards are going to get flipped over, people are going to grab things based on what they see. It looks like mass hysteria to me, but I know you love Casper, <coughs> Devon Sawa. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend Casper for the movie for this game. Go Splits, Casper, watch it, play it. Hex and Duel is a two to four player game designed by Constancy Enslick and Helmut. Hecht. Witches push their brooms around on the board trying to sweep their magical gems into the cauldron. And this is tricky because their brooms are uh, jinx, so they're a little... Meanwhile, guardians of time are rolling dice and trying to prevent the witch from having a lot of time to sweep up her magic stuff into the cauldron. The obvious choice here is Hocus Pocus because witches and shenanigans and witches shenanigans. Mummy's Treasure is a two to four player game by Marco Tubner. Treasure hunters are gonna dig for a variety of things. A hippo statue, a piece of jewelry, gold coins, gold lamps, scarab beetles, and fancy vases. And all of those treasures are going to be located on tiles, which are shaped kind of like Tetris pieces. And players are going to roll their dice and try to match what's on those tiles to be able to take them because then they've discovered them and they can put them in the excavation site. Now I know this is about mummies and there's a very obvious choice here, but I'm not going to go with it because I don't know if you watched Amazing Stories when you were younger, but there's one called Mummy Daddy and I love it and I laugh so hard every time and that's what I'm going to recommend because it brings me joy and laughter. Go Away Monster is a two to four player game designed by Monty and Ann Stambler. Kids are gonna pull pieces from a bag and they're trying to match bedroom items to those pieces. I think there's a bed, a lamp, a bear, and a picture. If they get the match, they get to put it on their board, but if they get a monster, they're supposed to throw it. Probably best if you have them throw it just like in the middle of the table, but if they're anything like my kids, they're gonna throw it across the room while screaming, Go Away Monster! Anyway, these are not the only misunderstood monsters in the world. Monsters, Inc. is similar in theme, so why not put that on to entertain yourself and your kids while you're playing? The Magic Labyrinth is a two to four player game by Dirk Bowerman. Little magicians try to collect magical items in a seemingly open castle yard area. However, 
every time they turn around there's an invisible wall that stops them. The invisible walls are created with an illusion, obviously. Underneath the main board you put together the labyrinth maze using wooden pieces and then your little magician characters are actually magnetized and there's a little bearing ball bearing bearing ball that is going to get sucked up or whatever it's called to your little piece and then it's going to drag with you as you go through the maze but if you hit a wall obviously the ball's not going to go anywhere and then boop it's going to fall out somewhere and it's the next player's turn so that's really fun of course there's other maze games like the amazing labyrinth or junior labyrinth and you could just make it a labyrinth filled night and while you're making it a labyrinth filled night you might as well go ahead and do a little magic dance you know because that's the best way to do it and watch the labyrinth another one of my like favorites Hmm. Techno Witches is a two to four player game by Heinrich Glumper. Witches and wizards fly around on vacuums and chase black cats. They could be racing, they could be going through an obstacle course, there's a couple different scenarios you can play. You're going to have to choose your flight path based on pieces that are available to you and then when it's full or you just decide you're ready to fly, you get to do that. Only you're probably going to fly into a tower or another wizard or off the table. Whoopsie daisy. It's fun though. The game that this makes me think of is Quidditch. <sighs> I know. Which is obviously from Harry Potter and there's like five million of those so whichever one of those you feel most comfortable watching with your kids I guess you could put that on and watch it after you fly around with butches on vacuum cleaners. Which, oh my gosh, which could also possibly be Hocus Pocus. It just all comes back together full circle. Anyway, Magician's Cookbook is a two to four player game by the phrase. Andreas, Ueli, and Lucas, magician assistants, are trying to create potions. And because, you know, they're crafty and all that, they can double up on their potions using smoke and mirrors. Well, at least mirrors because that's actually part of the game. Now, my all-time favorite Halloween movie, and the reason I hate Harry Potter, is The Worst Witch, and that of course has all sorts of potion-making mishaps, to say the least. So those are my recommendations, suggestions for family-friendly nights. Obviously, if you were adults, you could play like this bad boy over here, The Fury of Dracula watch Bram Stoker's Dracula or, you know, other vampire movies like Interview with the Vampire and I'll tell you what, Tiffany, you can have Dev and Sawa. I'm gonna have the big boys. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. Next week, I look forward to hearing about what you played on Halloween or what you're looking forward to for BGGCon because that's coming up. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. It's gonna be so much fun. Um, but I will see you then and bye.